So, what is the efficiency template? Well, the efficiency template, what you have here is it captures the types and the amount of work done by each channel member and what marketing functions they perform. The marketing functions being physical possession, ownership, promotion, risk, ordering, information sharing, the nine functions and what they do in the performance of those functions. But it does something else. It assigns the importance of each channel function in the creation and provision of end user outputs. And the last thing that it would do is that by assigning importance, it would ultimately help you calculate the share of the total channel profits that each channel member should receive. Should, it's an important word. Normative, the word means should. Marketing is a normative science in that market marketing research tells the practitioners what they should do. So remember, normative equals should. So we're going to look at this, and I don't want it to scare you. We're going to go right by it, and we're going to go to this in a minute. But I first want to kind of explain a few things. In this sheet, we have what is called the benefit potential. And I'll just briefly show it there. The benefit potential. The benefit potential adjusts the cost and assign which are important. It is these weights which are taken into account that are not taken into account that are costs that ultimately determine the normative profit share are what each channel member should get. This is what the efficiency template does in its single for single most important form. So let me kind of rewind a little bit. We're going to go back to this. First thing, the basics to think is that marketing flows in channels. And that each channel has a cost, as we talked about before. And so physical possession can be the storage and delivery. Ownership is inventory. Promotion can be personal selling. Negotiation can be time and legal costs. Financing can be the credit terms. Risk is the guarantees and the return allowances. Ordering is the processing. And then the payment is the collections and, of course, the losses of bad debts. And so here we go with the efficiency template. So the first thing I want you to notice is here we have all of the marketing functions, okay? All of the channel functions and the costs. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with the next slide. 
to give you an idea of what the actuals look like, okay? So I want you to kind of absorb this and look at it and look at the name of the table because that will be important, okay? The name is going to be important because it helps us to understand what this is about. It is a building materials company efficiency template for serving end users through retail. This would be the channel flow of like Lowe's Home Improvement. We have three <coughs> channel members. We have the manufacturers, we have the retailers, and we have the end users. Can anyone tell me what kind of a scale always has a hundred at the end? We talked about this when we were talking about the uh, talking about chapter two, chapter three. <clears throat> This is a constant sum scale. It's just what we talked about before. So what this means is, is it's a constant sum scale that assigns what total percentage of costs make up all nine channel functions. Constant sum scales assign weights. Constant sum scales live in the real world because they're all important, but what constant sum scales show is their level of importance. Now, those can be what they cost, but it doesn't assign the value. And so what a good efficiency template does through research, through activity-based cost Delphi analysis, is they can say which one of these particular channel functions is more important than the other. And this is what the benefit potential means. You will not have to fill that stuff in. I just want you to understand this, okay? The calculations are just gonna come later. So what this does is, is it assigns the value of each one of the nine functions. And so through calculations that you will not have to do, it creates a weighted scale. In other words, because physical and possession is so important, the weight is actually higher than the cost. It cre creates greater value. Ownership is important, but not necessarily so. We are talking about retailers, let's just say, as I said, home improvement. Promotion is low. Who needs promotion when you need to buy wood? All right, you know where, what wood is. Also think of the material itself, okay? Wood is a particular grade. It's almost a commodity. It's a nail. So promotion isn't necessarily important. Negotiation, not really. Financing, yeah, it's more important. Risk or to nah, that's are low. Now, remember that this is a constant sum scale. So it means that if I add five here, I've got to subtract five here. That's what it means. Okay. So that's how you read these columns downward. These columns, you read sideways. So what that says is, what is the performance from each channel member? In other words, what does each channel member do or perform in the overall functions? So what it says here is that the manufacturer does 30% of the work, retailer does 30%, but the end user does 40%. If we're thinking of wood and materials, just think about the physical possession, the moving of wood, 
of how important that is. Just think also what the risk that the consumer is if they buy a substantial amount of wood and have to store it while they're building something. There's always the potential for a disaster to come and wipe that out. Ownership, the retailer is more important because the retailer serves as that boundary spanner between the manufacturer and the end user. Promotion, the retailer is everything. You have a little bit of promotion. You probably have a sales agent who does work, but the end user doesn't do any promotion, so that's a zero. Negotiation, the retailer does the important work. Financing, of course, the consumer has greater value with that. Risk, ordering, and payment, all right? Now, one of the things I want you to look at and think about it, if, if I'm thinking of this as like a Lowe's Home Improvement Center, all right? It means to me, just by looking at this, that the one who's doing the most work or performance seems to be the retailer. And it kind of makes sense, all right? The retailer is that central location between where the buyers and the sellers come together. They negotiate and order the prices together. If the retailer takes physical possession and ownership, they set prices. And so this is logical in its way. And what it also means is that it adds up to 100 across the way because it is a constant sum scale, all right? Once again, a constant sum scale reflects reality. All right, here's the stuff that you're going to be doing work in. We need to take account of the final weight and the performance for each one of the channel members. If I take into account this, then this is what I'm calculating, and this is the important thing, the normative profit share. This is what each channel member should get, okay? We're all moving along the same lines and you're going, just tell us what we're supposed to calculate. Coming up. Oops, that's the answers. I can't show you that. What? For your um, efficiency template on your PowerPoint, information sharing is one of the categories. On right. But not on there. Oh, I Paul, yeah, that's right. This is the wrong scale. You're absolutely correct. I'm showing you the wrong one. This is what the calculation, my bad. So let me stop sharing there. Let me go show you the one that I should get. So one I should be showing you, my bad. Never get in a hurry. Oops, this is the one I want. Hooray. All right. Let's, for the sake of it, just say that information sharing isn't in there, okay? We're going to go ahead and do it without it. Oops, I did it again. I'm not going to show you the answers. Did I get it right? <clears throat> yes, I did. Okay. So turn to this page. And this is the work you're going to do with your groups. And this is what you're going to see on the test, except you're not going to see these little cheat sheets. Okay. These are percentages because that's what a constant sum scale is. These are percentages, because that's what a constant sum scale is. Remember in your basic math that you multiply percentages by moving the decimal point two spaces to the left, okay? And so that's what I'm doing. Final weight, 35 becomes 0.35. 
Manufacturer, final weight is 0.3. Ownership, 15 becomes 0.15. 30 becomes 0.13. Down the line. You will not get that final weight times channel member on the test. That's what you're going to have to know. Okay. So we are going to work together at the same time. See if I can do this. Yeah, I can do it. Now, let's see if any of them actually left markers. Hooray. All right. We're going to do this all together as a class. I want you to calculate these for me. The first column and then the remaining two, I want you to do in your groups. <clears throat> okay. So, just shout out. I want someone to calculate 0.35 times 0.3. 105. 0.105. Very good. Somebody calculate 0. 0.15 times 0. 0.3. 0. 0.045. Very good. 0. 0.08. Remember that an 8, the assumption is that there's a 0 in front of it. Remember that single digits, always assumption. So what is 0 0.08 times 0 0.2? Very good. What is 0 0.04 times 0 0.2? 0 0.008. 0 0 0.008, very good. Okay, what's the next one? 0 0.087. 0 0.087, very good. And stop sharing that. Okay. Oops. That was stupid. What's the next one? Point zero two times point three. Zero zero six. Point zero zero six. Very good. Point zero three times point two. Transitive property of multiplication, 0. 0.006. And what's the last one? 0. 0. 0.008. Now, would someone please add those all together? 0. 0.281. 0. 0.281. Um, for the purposes of the test, if you do it either as percentages or as decimals, I will count you to the one. Um, I like three significant figures. If you do it, it's just it, it's just these calculations usually come to that. So what does that say? What does it say is that the normative profit share for the manufacturer should be point. 281 or 28.1%. And so what that says is, is that the manufacturer should be making 28%. In reality, are they? Maybe. Maybe they're making less. Maybe they're making more. But what we've been able to determine is, we've been able to calculate what they should make and this is important because it's the foundation of the equity principle, which states that an honest day's wage should be equal to an honest day's work. All right, so we've got to start. I would like you now to get in all your groups, say hello to each other, exchange emails, and I would like you to calculate the remaining two columns, please and then we will talk about it, okay? All right. Perambulate. Yeah. 
Walk all around. And when we start coming up with the calculations, just stay where you're at, okay? Nobody has to go back to their original sense. I love sorry. Which groupie? Yeah.
This one's out too far. I got a bus driver. It's a cool town. Did you get played on too? Give it about five more. Yeah, that's the best very true. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Any of these, by the way, your questions about the industry you're talking about? That's awesome. Like, three What are you trying to do? I'm trying to do like. Manufacturing. 
I think everybody's good. Let's go ahead and go. All right. So let's fill in these. Fill in the next column for the retail. So somebody give me this number here. 105. What's the next one? 0 0.06. Mm -hmm. I always put my significant figure, so I'll put a zero there. What's the next one? Zero six four. Next one. Zero two four. Next one. Zero eight seven. Zero eight seven. Next one. Zero one zero. Zero one zero. Very good. Thank you. Three sig figs. What's the next? Zero eighteen. Zero eighteen. Yeah, I know a main one. And what's the next one? Zero two four. Zero two four. And what's that total? 0.392. Okay, so that means that the retailer should be getting 39.2% of the profits. Okay, so before we go on, a little testing for you to help you with the inverse property of a multiplicate, excuse me, of addition and subtraction states that I can work this inversely. Since I'm working from 1.000, what I can do is I can add 0 0.281, 0 0.392 together, and I come up with 376. If I take 1.0, subtract 0 0.673, what I should come up with this answer should be, if it's got my math right, is it should be 0 0.327. Inverse property, addition, subtraction, that's how you error check, okay? So, let's go fill the rest of this out. What's this one? 0. 0.140, very good. Next one? 0. 0.045, the next one? Zero. Zero. No, of course. Okay. What's the next one? 0. 0.008, 0. 0. the next one? 0.116, the next one. 0. 0.004, the next one. 0. 0.006, 0. 006, and the next one. 0. 0.008. 0. 0.008, and what is the total? 0. 0.37. There you go. Very good. So it air traps, air checks everything out. And so now we have our calculations. Good job. So what does it mean? All right, after you do all of that exercise. Well, it means 20 points on your test. Um, but it I want it also means something else, okay? Yes, 20 points, okay? Yeah, so this is two letter grades, just knowing this stuff, all right? What it means is this, is that when it comes in the long term, this calculation helps us to argue how to proportionally share profits among the channel members. Now, the end user, of course, does not share channel profits, but what it does is it substantiates that the end user has value in the exchange process as well. And this individual should be given some kind of break in the price. And that's in essence what it means. You're going to be asked, on the test, does this make sense, okay? And you can either say yes, or you can either say no, but what you need to say is, is that the normative profit share states that the retailer has the substantial amount of performance in the channel system. Anybody know what a contractor is? 
A contractor is an independent individual who brings individuals such as pipe fitters, electricians, carpenters, and builds things for people. Contractor, by the way, if any of you are tired of working in this, go get your contractor's license. I swear to you, you'd be making six figures. Um, contractors make money. Go try to get work done right now. All right. Especially when they're building out towards Banner Elk. Anyway, you know about it. Uh, anyway, so if I if you were to see a contractor here and some of these numbers would be higher, you would certainly consider that the contractor, because of all the work that they do, would have a greater amount or should have a greater proportional share. Hint, hint. All right. Make sure that when you're doing the test, you look at that title and hint and answer those questions. All right, done with the hints. Okay, so this is the efficiency template. It's used to be able to argue successfully, hopefully, how we should value our channel members. And it is used to argue whether some, sh some should have less and some should have more because the equity principle is built on fairness. And especially in the channel system, fairness is key. So I'm gonna go one last thing and we're going to go. So I talked about the important weights I talked about activity-based costing. Activity-based costing, by the way, is also part of what's known as zero-based budgeting, in which you start with a clean sheet and you cost out each good you buy based upon the measure of their performance. You don't have to know about Delphi analysis, but it is used to use to create quantitative me measures. So this is basically what we went through. We'll talk about it later, but this is what I wanted to get to, all right? It reveals the cost of the functions as they get shared across the channel. It indicates how much each channel member contributes to the overall value. It demonstrates in numbers how important each function is. And it is a powerful tool for justifying changes in existing channel functions, or excuse me, operating channel members based upon fairness. And when we start talking about conflict and we start talking about power, fairness is going to be number one in there, okay? We'll review, yes. So on the test, you could um, argue that this doesn't make sense if you believe that a different channel member should have more profit share. Yeah. Okay, so it's just like up to your own personal opinion. I will take yes or no as long as you tell me or give me a good answer, okay. all right? You know, I mean, on the position papers, when they come up, I, I've, I've given hundreds, well, not hundreds, but I mean, high 90s on both sides of the scale saying, no, this isn't right. Yes, it isn't. I want you to be able to effectively, you know, be able to judge and justify what you're saying, Okay. Folks, I should be here Tuesday, just to let you know again. Um, check your email. If I'm not, then I'll see you Thursday. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much for the email, too. No I've problem. never had a press do that for me. That, like, set up a whole structure and a framework for me to kind of just go back in and catch them. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's not bad. You okay, man? You all right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.